Hi everybody, it's Mr. Baker here with another physics video. Today we're going to be looking at AC, DC. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at AC, DC. I'm going to be answering this question, how does electricity get to our homes? Okay, so let's have a look then. This should probably be some revision of what you have already done to do with circuits, but let's have a look. Cells and batteries supply electric current, which always flows in the same direction. We call this direct current. So we've got a cell there, you can see that the positive side has got the long line and the negative side has got the sort of the short fat line and the current is coming from the positive around through the switch, through the lamp, back to the negative. And the current always flows in the same way and that's what direct current is. Alternating current is one which is constantly changing direction. So that's a symbol for an AC power supply, an alternating current power supply, that little squiggly line in between those two circles. And then when we switch the switch, the current will flow in one way, and then the other, and then in one way, and then the other. So alternating current constantly changes direction. And a lamp will work with AC or DC, and some components will only work with DC. So this is how we can look at electricity. We can use this thing called an oscilloscope or a cathode ray oscilloscope um, to look at what's happening in a circuit. So this square here, this green, this is the screen and then we've got one line going through the middle on the y-axis and one line going through the middle on the x-axis. Um, the line up is the voltage and the line across is time. So we would say that the, the, the voltage there is zero, anything above that line would be positive, anything below is negative, and time would be going along and we can measure that. So we can set each of these squares to a certain voltage. You can see there's lots of different dials and things like this, but one of them shows the volts per division. So each of these divisions, each of these squares, we can set to a certain voltage. And then we can also do the same on the x-axis with the time per division. I can set these squares to a certain time and then I can see what's going on. If it's just a straight line going along, that means the voltage isn't changing, it's not going backwards and forwards, so that would mean it's a direct current. If it's making a curved shape, going up and down, then that would be an alternating current. And we can measure the peak voltage, we can measure the time it takes for one cycle, and we can look at the frequency um, and measure what the frequency of the alternating current might be using this oscilloscope. So let's look at some examples then, measuring DC potential difference to start off with. All three diagrams below show the trace with the voltage setting at two volts per centimeter. So one square is one centimeter. So what would the voltage be in each of this case? So we said that the middle is zero, so A is zero volts. Now because it's two volts per centimeter, so that would be two volts, and that would be another two volts. So if I'm counting from the middle up to four, so the second trace shows a potential difference of plus four volts. And then if we look at example C, so one square, so this is the center, so down is minus two, and then if that's about the middle of the next one, that'd be another one, so it'd be another minus one, so it'd be minus two, minus one. So we'd be looking at minus three volts. So that's showing me that the electricity is going around in one direction, in a positive direction and this might show that I've swapped over the direction of the cell or the power supply. So the current in example C is going in a different direction to the current in example B. So let's look at another example where we're measuring the alternating current potential difference. If we let the time setting be 10 milliseconds per centimetre and the voltage setting be 2 volts per centimetre, in this case the waveform performs one complete oscillation over a horizontal distance of 2 centimetres. If we have a look, so it goes up and down and back up to the middle in two squares. Each of these squares is one centimetre, so one complete cycle is two centimetres. Therefore, the period of the waveform is two squares times the time for each of those squares, which is 10 milliseconds, so two times 10 milliseconds. So the period of the wave is 20 milliseconds. As frequency is one divided by the period, then frequency is 1 divided by 0.02, so we get 50 hertz. And this is actually the frequency of the electricity that's coming out of the plugs in our homes. We might be able to see some other things from this diagram as well. The peak to trough displacement of the waveform is about 5 centimetres, and we can see that. So 
if that's half a square, one, two, so we've got two and a half above, one, two and a half below, so five centimeters. We've said that each of the centimeters is worth two volts, so it'd be two times five. So it's peak to trough. We sometimes call this the peak to peak potential difference, and the peak to peak potential difference here is 10 volts. Okay, so let's have a look at what's happening in our houses with the mains electricity. So the electricity supply to our homes is called the mains electricity. It's an alternating current supply, and in the UK, the current changes direction every one one hundredth of a second. This means it completes a complete cycle every one fiftieth of a second. It therefore has a frequency of 50 cycles per second or 50 hertz. Our plugs are rated at 230 volts. This means they have the same effect as a 230 volt DC battery on devices like lamps. One side of the alternating supply changes constantly between plus 325 volts and minus 325 volts, and this terminal is called the live terminal. Touching this terminal can be fatal. The other terminal remains at about 0 volts, and this terminal is called the neutral terminal. So here's the oscilloscope display from the live and neutral terminals. Line A shows us the trace from the live terminal, and line B shows us the trace from the neutral terminal. So how does electricity get to our homes then? So it goes through something called the national grid. The national grid is the name given to the network of cables and transformers that transport electricity from the power stations in Britain to homes, factories, offices, shops, and other places that require it. The national grid is the name given to the network of cables and transformers that transport electricity from all those places. And it looks something like this. It goes from the power station to something called a transformer, then through some power lines, then back through a transformer, then to factories, through a step down transformer again, to our homes. To keep it efficient, a very high alternating potential difference is maintained across the power lines. This keeps the electric current through them low, so power loss due to heating in the cables is reduced. Okay, so that's the end of this one then. You should be able to state the difference between AC and DC and be able to draw the shapes of them on the oscilloscope trace. You should be able to state what types of current the main supply is, and you should be able to describe the characteristics of the UK main supply and compare AC traces in terms of period and amplitude. So how does electricity get to our homes then? So we produce electricity in a power station. That is normally as an AC supply. So the alternating current supply goes through transformers and the rest of the national grid to eventually reach our homes. Okay, so that's been all about alternating current and direct current. I've been Mr. Baker, this has been another physics video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.